everyone, this is David from Automotive Press. The world of automotive industry is changing rapidly as we move toward electric vehicles and away from gasoline engine cars. We're also moving away from things like V8 engines and diesel engines, and then we are moving away from cars like this, which is a wagon, onto SUVs and crossovers. Of course, that took many years to happen, but we are in the emerging trend of many things happening at the same time. So it's an exciting time for all of us who are involved in the auto industry, but it's also sad to see some type of models disappearing from the marketplace. An example is a wagon like this. Now this is what we call the cross country, which is a wagon that's being raised with a more uh, off-road capability. So it's more like a SUV in disguise. But uh, we are slowly moving away from these type of vehicles because everyone is basically buying SUV and crossovers. Now in the old days, that was fine because SUV was based on body on frame. So they were truly a truck based uh, utility vehicle. So they had a different uh, place in the marketplace from a station wagons or wagons like this. But these days, the line between something like this and crossovers are very difficult to figure out. In fact, it's very blurry because today's crossovers are basically wagons that are simply taller and bigger. So with that in mind, I do want to talk about the 2022 Volvo that I have right here because this is the type of car you should consider compared to an actual SUV or crossover because there's so many advantages in buying a wagon type vehicle versus a taller and bigger crossover. Even though this might be a dying breed, I think this is what you should buy in today's marketplace. So let me talk about five reasons why you should consider a wagon type model like this Volvo compared to crossover or SUVs. Now, even though the industry is moving away from wagons like this toward crossovers and SUVs, well, it's kind of a sad trend because I really do think wagons, or sometimes we call it estate or touring models, are far better cars to drive than your typical crossovers and SUVs. Thankfully, there's some renewed interest in vehicles like this, such as the Audi RSX. It's a high performance wagons and people love that thing. So there's more renewed interest in that type of performance vehicles, which I'm really thankful for. Well, this Volvo has a two liter turbocharged and supercharged engine uh, that has sufficient power and torque to give you the type of ride and performance that you will really enjoy. And I'm going to give you five reasons why it's actually better to buy wagon than the crossovers or SUVs because they just simply perform better, their design and packaging is better. Well, you know what? I love wagons, so let me walk you through the five reasons you should consider this instead of crossovers. So the first reason why you should consider buying wagons versus crossovers or SUV is a very simple one. And that is wagons drive better. It handles better. It's more fun to drive. Why is that? Well, there are a number of different uh, reasons for that. Um, the wagons are based on sedan, so it's obviously lower in terms of height. So it has a lower center of gravity. That allows engineers to calibrate the suspension and the steering in a way that's a little bit different from a larger, bigger, and taller SUVs. And also, most wagons are based on uh, the sedan counterpart, which these days are kind of like a sport sedans. So by nature, they're sportier to begin with versus SUVs and crossovers that are designed from a beginning to be a utility vehicle. So I noticed, for example, in this Volvo V90, the handling is clear, is sharp, is very predictable. Uh, again, it drives a lot like a sports sedan. And it's also, just generally speaking, fun to drive because when you go around the corners and so forth, it stays stable and you don't have that, that kind of feeling of uh, tipsy that you get sometimes in a tall, tall 
small crossovers. So generally speaking, I really, really enjoy driving any kind of wagons, including this Volvo V90. Now, there are fewer and fewer brands uh, that have wagons these days, so there are not that many choices. But if you can find one, I would buy one before they're gone because they're basically dying breed. And honestly, they're the best of both worlds because you get the utility of uh, crossovers, but with the handling and the fun to drive factor of a sedan. So I'll take you on the road and talk about, a little bit more about the driving character of this Volvo. Uh, but that's my number one reason why you should buy a wagon versus a crossover. So I'm driving the Volvo V90 cross country now and uh, you know what it's just a really really nice vehicle to drive once again I cannot point enough that uh, lower profile sedan based wagons like this infinitely drives better than tall big and bulky SUV they just are not the same thing and uh, you are reminded every time you drive a wagon like this that it's simply a better performer and handles better um, now this is not a hybrid it's not a plug-in hybrid uh, which is the direction that Volvo is going so this is going to be a very rare breed indeed because we're not going to have much um, many choices anymore once uh, all the manufacturers begin to move toward EVs so this is kind of your last chance to buy a gasoline powered non-hybrid non-EV wagons was a truly truly a rare item and uh, as I mentioned earlier the handling is sharp uh, it's very predictable I have a really good road feel from the from the road thanks to the Pirelli Scorpion tires which also has a lower profile 45 series you don't really see 45 series tires too often in uh, large SUVs uh, so once again it sits low on the ground it hugs the road and uh, most of all I just really like the way it drives uh, both in a lower speed like this in the city road but also on the highway because it's really really stable on the highway minimal wind noise uh, and so overall day to day it's a much much uh, more interesting car to drive uh, so I'm just making some turns here and Volvo has done a really clever job of building in just the right amount of road feel into my steering which is something that's difficult to do I can actually increase or decrease the road feel through the menu here and I have it on a slightly sportier version right now and um, wow it's just a lovely car to drive it's smooth and quiet and I think for the passengers it's also a more interesting and inviting interior uh, whereas in SUV once again you do sit tall and high but sometimes it can be a little bit bumpy or thing feels a little bit uh, unstable um, but this thing is just really buttoned down it's stable and um, wow I really enjoy driving this thing so for me the choice is pretty clear if I want to be able to enjoy driving and take a car to maybe even the curvy mountain roads and uh, kind of use it like a sports sedan but I still need the utility and cargo space of a um, sport utility vehicle then this is the best of both world it's a win-win for me anyways because I don't have to give up any of the fun to drive uh, factor uh, while still having enough practicality and utility to make this thing work overall the v90 retains much of what we like about European cars which provides better road feel and better um, feedback to your hand and just uh, overall um, a good cornering and handling ability so the v90 is a win for me and I wish that more people would consider uh, this type of uh, wagon uh, versus the crossovers in terms of the powertrain uh, this Volvo has a 2 liter turbocharged 4 with uh, 295 horsepower and 310 pound foot of torque it doesn't seem like a lot but actually it's more than sufficient it has a quick acceleration you step on the gas and uh, it moves um, briskly and actually Volvo did a really good job of refining the engine because it's extremely smooth and it's a very clever engineering because they have both supercharger and a turbocharger at the same time that's a pretty interesting combination from an engineers perspective uh, but it works it's smooth, uh, it accelerates well, and um, the combination of supercharger and turbochargers pretty well removes all delays and uh, lags when you step on the gas. And the engine is actually marvelous, and I really enjoy uh, the engine, the way it's aligned and engineered with this vehicle. 
The second reason why I like wagons like the Volvo compared to SUVs and crossovers is because it's simply a better design. From engineer's perspective, these wagons set lower, it's a sleeker profile, better on the highway, uh, better wind resistant, and just a much cooler looking design, especially when compared to a big, bulky, and tall SUVs and crossover these days. This is a trendy, cool looking wagon that I really love uh, very much in terms of design, but it's also just engineering perspective wise, it's a better packaging, better design, and allows you to have all of the utility of a SUV without compromise. So I think the second reason why uh, you should consider buying something like this is simply because it's a better design and better engineered vehicle from my perspective uh, because it offers as much practicality as you want without compromising this amazing design which is really sleek and from my perspective absolutely beautiful design. The third reason why I really like wagons more than crossovers is because it sits much lower. It's a lower profile, lower height, allows me to enter any underground parking without any problem because sometimes taller SUV we have a problem at uh, downtown Vancouver here in the west coast. Um, but also oftentimes in long distances I like to carry a cargo box on top and that allows me to carry more um, goods, especially bulky stuff. Um, but if you put a cargo box on top of SUV, you cannot get into any parking lot because it's just way too high. But with a wagon like this, I found out I can put a very large cargo box and still get into a parking lot. So that's a huge advantage from my perspective anyway. And also, many of you guys like to carry bicycles. Now, if you want to carry bicycles, either you carry in the back by having some kind of a bicycle holder from a, a hitch, or you put uh, something on top, right, through the adaptation of the bicycle holders on the roof. And again, it's much easier if it's a wagon because it's a basic height of a sedan to put the bicycle on top versus a SUV, which is almost impossible to reach the top. So while the lower roof might not matter so much for some of you, I think personally it has a lot of advantage because I can go into any parking, I can put stuff on top, and it's just easier to access and it provides uh, very interesting uh, options for those of you who like to use this for many outdoor things. The fourth reason is the fact that uh, wagons are, typically speaking, more efficient than similar crossovers SUV. Because it's based on a sedan, it's lighter, it's lower, less wind resistant, and also they often use a better, more efficient tires. So for example, we have in this case a Volvo, uh, typical lower profile Pirelli tires. And not only does it give you better handling because it's a 45 series uh, profile tires, but it's also a road tire versus in a larger SUV or crossovers, you often get uh, oversized off-road tires, which are noisier, not as efficient, and they simply obviously don't provide better handling as well. So uh, the wagons, if you're comparing exactly to a similar type of crossover, will give you better fuel efficiency and overall better packaging. So the fourth reason is that uh, wagons are simply more efficient, and it's gonna save you a little bit of money. The fifth reason why I really like wagons compared to crossovers or SUV is because I really think they provide a better value. Oftentimes they're a little bit cheaper because crossovers gotten so expensive these days as they bring more and more options and features and pack them into a large SUV and crossovers compared to a wagon like this which is remaining very conservative again because it's based on the sedan counterpart. So overall I noticed that the price of the crossovers increasing and rising while something like this remaining very neutral and I think very value oriented. So I think the fifth reason why it's good to buy a wagon is because it's actually better pricing. You might even get some discount because it's not as much in demand. You can save some money based on fuel savings. You can save some money because you might actually get discount on the wagon versus a crossover. And, and generally speaking, the overall MSRP is a little bit lower for uh, this type of vehicle than a very popular and larger uh, crossovers. So I just gave you five reasons why I like wagons more than SUVs, but there are also some stuff that you need to keep in mind because there are some disadvantages of buying uh, wagon type vehicles as well. 
Well, for one, because I say it sets lower, it also means there's less uh, headroom, uh, and you don't set as tall as uh, SUVs. So some people really like that feeling of setting up high, uh, as uh, we do in trucks and SUVs. You're not going to get that in uh, wagons. We do set lower, like in a typical sedan. And so if you like uh, that feeling of setting up nice and high when you're driving, you're not going to get that in the wagons. And for the same reason, you don't get as much cargo capacity. Now you have more than enough capacity in the back there to haul anything you want, personally for me anyway. But uh, do you get more space in the larger crossover? Yes, you do, because again, it sits tall, the vehicle is larger. So if you really need to be able to pack everything in the back of the um, vehicle, then yeah, the crossover or large SUV will still give you more cargo space. The last thing to keep in mind when you buy a wagon versus a SUV is that the resale value of these vehicles is not as good. Simply because there's not as much demand for wagons anymore. People are not looking for this, but they are looking for SUVs in the used marketplace. Uh, also, much harder to find the wagons now because in addition to Volvo, we have Audi still offering A6 and A4 wagon type vehicles called the all-road is essentially a wagon with uh, upgraded components to raise it a little bit higher uh, and also Mercedes still offer C-Class and E-Class wagons but BMW does not offer a wagon versions anymore which is called Touring at least here in North America and very few other Japanese brands really do not offer any other type of wagon type vehicles once again you can argue that many crossovers are simply taller wagons really the definition of a wagon and crossovers are very blurry but nevertheless traditional wagon like this that sits lower based on the car chassis is uh, disappearing very quickly so if you like wagons if you like this type of uh, vehicle for many reasons I pointed out I would just go and buy it now because it's going to be impossible to find in a few years time I'm disappointed personally that the trend is moving toward SUVs and crossovers away from a better packaged and better engineered wagons like this. Uh, but perhaps things will begin to reverse again thanks to the popularity of the Audi RS6 because people love that wagon and the performance that goes with it. So if um, car manufacturers can pack in additional performance into the wagons, it could really resurrect this whole notion of a high performing high utility vehicle which we don't seem to get anymore these days so those are some of my concluding remarks i hope you enjoyed my video really look forward to sharing more ideas with you but thank you so much for watching please hit the um, likes if you can and subscribe if you're able to do so and i look forward to sharing more car stories with you in the future thank you so much i'm signing off for now